In this episode of Voice of the Sea, we're rehabilitating turtles with the Maui Ocean Center Marine Institute. We'll rescue a turtle, learn about the latest techniques in turtle care, and witness the release of recovered patient MA-164. Then we'll explore the Maui Ocean Center and talk story with cultural advisor Dane Maxwell and general manager Tapani Biori. Just as we arrive at the Marine Institute, a call comes in to the turtle hotline and we're off to a rescue. We received a call about a, I believe it's a juvenile or subadult green turtle that's been stuck in the rocks along the shoreline of Kalama Park. And do you have any other information about it? We don't. They send us a picture and it appears to be stuck sideways. The way the rocks are there, sometimes when the tide's high or there's a little swell in the water, the turtles will get knocked up in the rocks and become stuck. We receive at least one or two calls a day. As far as being stuck in the rocks, we probably have six or seven a year that become stuck in the rocks at Kalama Park. So you're actually heading out a couple times a day to help rescue a, a, a sea turtle? We are, absolutely. We also have a team of volunteers that assist with the response. Hey, how's it going? It's um, Tommy with the Marine Institute. We're here uh, about the turtles stuck in the rocks. Hey, how's it going? Oh, big one, huh? Oh, thanks for calling, man. Appreciate it. Oh. That is a big one. Wow. Hi. Normally, we just see the small one stuck in the rocks here. <laughs> was amazingly smooth when we came up and I saw the Honu stuck I was thinking oh man there's no way those things are heavy and then you guys were just so smooth and it swam away. Oh, we have such a great team yeah we've done it so many times. Can you talk me through what kind of information you're recording? Yeah so we're looking at first of all location, date, time as well as what species of sea turtle we're looking at. We generally respond to the green sea turtles, mm -hmm. but there can be other varieties here. We also are looking at the age class, the sex, the size, and also what the stranding cause is. So we have some other information here, if it is a fishery interaction, to specify exactly what type of interaction is happening. To me, that turtle looked pretty clean and healthy. Um, how would you assess its health in the short time you got to observe it? Yeah, it looked really healthy. So we look at things like if there's a ton of algae growth or barnacles, it could maybe be a little bit sicker not getting to the cleaning stations. We also look at body condition score. So kind of the fatty tissue around its neck and flippers to see if it's been eating well. I that see. one looked regular size. So about a three out of five. Um, which is really good, that's what they should be. You don't see too many super fat obese ones just in the wild because they're foraging every day and pretty active. So it looked like a really healthy turtle. Next, we head back to the lab to see what treatment looks like for the turtle patients under care at the Marine Institute. First step, patient Hilo 1. Michaela's scrubbing the carapace of the sea turtle right now. While in rehabilitation, it's pretty normal for them to grow some algae on their shells. And that's because they're not out in the wild. They don't have the rough sand or the rocks or even those special little cleaning stations that they have out in the ocean. And we are like an outdoor facility too. So being out in the sun, we have salt water. Algae is definitely going to be growing. This turtle is actually from the Big Island, it's from Hilo, mm -hmm. and it's stranded with a pretty severe entanglement. Mm -hmm. You can see the entanglement injury on the right front flipper here. 
in the past, injuries like this would typically lead to an amputation. But over the past year, we've developed a new technique where we treat them with therapeutic laser, massage, and topical wound care. We've seen really good results. We've been able to save quite a few flippers. And now they're going to treat this right front flipper with some therapeutic laser. Um, and Chanel will tell you a little bit about that. Our therapeutic laser, we've just started doing this this year. It's a combination of red and blue light. So the red light helps with um, tissue granulation, so growing all that new tissue back. Um, it also helps with circulation from the limb to the rest of the body because when we see swelling, it's mainly a circulation issue. And this treatment lasts for about five minutes. We flip the patient onto the carapace because oftentimes it helps to calm them down. We don't want them to you know, flap around too much and injure themselves. And by rubbing his throat like that, it seems to help calm them down. is going to help clean the wound. Most turtles are in and out of here within the same day that they get called into the response line, but in more severe cases, they become rehab patients. This one came in in July, and it's almost just about ready to go. Um, we're just waiting for that last bit of wound to get covered up. But when they first come in, they like usually can't even really move their flippers very well. And as you could see when we brought it up on the table, has great mobility, lots of energy, which is what we definitely like to see. So after we've done the iodine scrub, uh, we are gonna do a little bit of debridement. So taking off some of that dead tissue, that's what Tommy is doing right now. That will just help with the healing process. Then we're gonna put a little bit of topical antibiotic ointment. This one also does get laser treatment on some days. It no longer needs any sort of massage therapy because all the swelling has gone down. We usually use the massage therapy uh, when we have a lot of swelling in the flipper from a, the line being entangled for a longer amount of time. And we're getting that last little bit of that dead tissue off and then we'll do an assessment with our team later in the week and see if it will be ready for release soon. So this is our topical antibiotic ointment. We call it SSD, it's silver sulfadiazmine. I just do just a little bit. So this is a juvenile green sea turtle. This is actually the second time we've treated this patient. It originally stranded last year, same type of injury, had entanglement of both flippers, and then it restranded last week. Can you tell me some of the things that you might um, discuss with the veterinary team or that you look for to see when one of the honus is ready to go back into the wild? We look at whether or not they're gaining weight. We look at their blood values. We look at how well their wounds are healing. We wait for their wounds to be fully healed before release. We work in partnership with NOAA Fisheries, our veterinary team and their veterinary team, we meet once a week, talk about all the different patients, their treatment plan, how they're moving along, when they're ready for release. So it's a really nice partnership. I'm just going to give it a quick antibiotic injection. And that antibiotic will help to keep the wound clean and, and not get infected? Absolutely, yep. So the threats that we see most here in Hawaii are fisheries interactions, like entanglements and hooks. So we kind of tailor our programs to address those threats. We see a lot of, just like monofilament fishing line entanglements, we see a lot of hookings. So we collect all the gear, we take off the of sea turtles, like all the fishing line, all the hooks, all the fishing gear, and we analyze that. We're actually working on a report right now for 2020. So hopefully that can assist with informing management decisions in the future. Last year, we had 276 confirmed strandings. This year, we're just over 200 so far for the year. Already? Already, yeah. What can people do to help mitigate those threats? Most importantly, if they see a sick or injured sea turtle on Maui, give us a call. We'll respond to 
any sea turtle, um, 808, 286, 2549 will definitely respond. If you're out snorkeling and you see like some fishing line, pick it up. If you're fishing, your line gets stuck, make an effort to retrieve it. Pick up some trash off the beach. We can all make a difference. We have a beach cleanup program, the Hono Hero program, self-led beach cleanup program. It can be found on our website. So for people not on Maui and they find a sick or injured sea turtle, who should they call? There's a statewide marine animal response line. It's 888-256-9840. Our last patient is getting its final treatment today. Prior to release of a sea turtle, we insert a microchip tag. We did this one at the time of admit, so we aren't going to do it today, but insert a tag. See, it's like the size of a grain of rice. This is similar to what you put in a dog or a cat, and it can be read by the scanner right there. They all have like a unique ID. So you can see with the sea turtle patient right here, we'll check this right hind flipper. And that's its ID right there. We also, prior to release, we etch the carapace with a Dremel and give it a modal tool tag. So we actually, we have so many juvenile turtles right now. We've been uh, doing the modal tool tag when they come in just so we can tell them apart. So before release right now, we're going to redo this. Michaela is an expert. MA is for Maui, 164 is the number that has been modal tool tagged. So there's a little bit of algae on the carapace. She's just gonna wipe it off really quick. There are certain techniques that help keep turtles calm. One is placing a towel over its head. So a sea turtle's carapace, it's made of keratin similar to our fingernails. So that's the same as if we were, you know, to use it on our fingernails. Now she's gonna paint this etching with white paint that's harmless to the turtle. And it typically lasts up to a year. After two months of rehabilitation, patient MA164 is ready for its release back into the wild. So as a sea turtle technician, what is your role? It encompasses a lot of different components, but the biggest thing is care for the turtles. In the turtle program, we only have a few of us that help do all the husbandry, as well as the rescues, as well as the treatments on the turtles while they're here. And then of course, keeping track of all the data on our turtles and keeping the charts up to date every day for our rehabilitation patients, and then tracking any of our turtles after they've left the facility. We do the pit tags, which you would need a special skin for, but we also do those carapace tags so that people can easily identify them from a distance because we don't want people swimming right up next to them or walking up right next to them. People can send their photos or their sighting reports to our email through our website or through NOAA and then we get those images as well as dates of the sighting and location of the sighting and then that helps us to track the turtle after we've released it. So this is one of our fishing line recycling bins. We have almost 40 on island at different beaches and places that are popular fishing spots on island. So as you can see, the fishermen have been putting their used line in here, which is great because if it's clean enough, we can recycle it. And Where do you recycle it at? So we collect it all and then we actually send it to Berkeley. They have a facility there and a program that um, processes it and then uses it for different materials. Oh, cool. Yeah. There's quite a lot and sometimes it gets a little stuck. We try to have a regular schedule. We used to do it at least once to twice a month. How long has this program been going? This started in June of 2018. The University of Hawaii Sea Grant College Program focused on Hawaii's coasts and its communities through sustainable development, safe seafood supply, sustainable coastal tourism, hazard resilience, and healthy coastal ecosystems. Hawaii's Sea Grant. You're watching Voice of the Sea. We're with Chanel Brown on our way to release a patient 
rehabilitated by the Maui Ocean Center Marine Institute team. This is a really exciting day for all of us, especially uh, the people that have been doing rehab on this turtle since we rescued it in July. This turtle was found on the south shore of Maui, so this is where we are now in Kihei. Um, we're gonna find a really nice beach for this one to get released at. Typically, we do release them right at the same beaches that they were actually rescued at. This is definitely one of our longer patients that we've had this year, and today's the lucky day that he actually gets to go back out to his ocean home. Nothing really feels better than seeing this patient that we've had for two months, you know, um, come in super lethargic, super low energy and sick. Um, the second you pick him up, he sees the ocean, he starts flapping. It's like, you know, your heart sings with the turtle. So it's like we're all going back into the ocean that day. It's just awesome. What kind of academic or experience do you need to be here and be working with the sea turtles? I actually jo just got my bachelor's in marine biology from Humboldt State um, in 2019. And then of course I moved home and did some education work actually here at the aquarium and um, started here as an intern right after that. While they're here, what kind of food do you feed them? We actually go out and collect our own limu or seaweed. We also like to feed them squid. So we chop up some calamari for them every single day. Just really try to beat them up, give them that protein that they need to be nice and strong before we actually release them out. How often do they eat or how much do they eat? Each of our sea turtle patients are administered about three to 5% of their body weight, depending on what their previous condition was. Where do you see your career going or do you have goals from here? I always wanted to get into conservation work. I've done a bunch of work in the education, outreach programs, but this is really where I wanted to be. So in my recent life goals, I've achieved that. When I first started as an intern, we only had three tanks. So that's three patients max. If you look around today, we have about seven or eight tanks. So that means we can hold about seven or eight patients. And I think in the future, it's only gonna grow more. So it's exciting. Are there opportunities for people to volunteer or intern with you? Yeah, we love interns and we love volunteers. They are truly the backbone of our organization. As you've seen, we're a pretty small staff. We only have four members. So having all the help that we can get, people that you know, want to clean tanks even, I'm like so grateful for that. People that want to come and help with release or even help us rescue sea turtles because they're not light, <laughs> they're extremely heavy. Those opportunities are always open. And then we are also open for volunteerships as well, which are a little less requirement and a lot easier to fit into people's schedules. We are looking for a few heroes, mentors, trailblazers, innovators, a passion to change lives, spark curiosity, open hearts, and awaken minds, help students answer the question, who am I? This could be your calling, but this is no job. It's the journey of a lifetime. Be a hero. Be a teacher. watching Voice of the Sea. The Maui Ocean Center, which opened in 1998, cares for an extensive collection of marine life from across Hawaii and the Pacific, and serves as a hub for education, outreach, and cultural knowledge. We talk with cultural advisor, Dean Maxwell, and general manager, Tapani Biori. 
We pump 1.2 million gallons of seawater daily into the system. We filter a couple different ways and we release the clean water back into the Malaya Harbor behind us here. And we have actually done a scientific study that proves that we are actually cleaning the Malaya Harbor. Meaning that the water you put in is cleaner than the water you took out. That is correct. I would not be afraid to drink our effluent water, except it's a little bit too saline. <laughs> uh, the salinity numbers are similar to the ocean, of course. So in addition to the caretaking of the animals that are here at the Maui Ocean Center. You're also affiliated with the Maui Ocean Center Marine Institute, as well as a number of other nonprofit community groups. It became really clear that uh, we really need to pivot our purpose, our mission, our vision, and our value. Ultimately, to me, it's very simple. We need to add value to our local community every day. The respect has to be the foundation of this engagement at all times. This is why we have all the signage here is bilingual. I would like most visitors coming from the mainland here, I would like them to feel like they have stepped into a foreign country almost. All the landscaping is uh, actually indigenous Hawaiian landscaping right now. All the coral under our care, it's all live coral. We have regular coral spawning events here. That's a mind-blowing experience. And you can actually come and spend the night and watch the coral spawn at yeah, the yeah, aquarium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's We've done that cool. uh, many, many times. Oh, there it goes. We are actually showing and giving our guests ability to hand feed corals under a microscope and that actually gets blown up in a digital screen. So you can actually see the coral as an animal. It's beautiful. It just uh, blew my mind. I will uh, continue to do my part and continue to increase my responsibility. I also encourage our communities to hold us collectively, Maui Ocean Center and Maui Ocean Center Marine Institute uh, responsible, adding value to the community. That is our role. I am the cultural advisor to the Maui Ocean Center and I've been here since the age of 14, not in this capacity, but uh, it was when my grandfather was the original cultural advisor here. So it's sort of a legacy role. Can you tell me what you know about the Hawaiian way of thinking of the kind of conservation work that we're, we've been learning about with the Honu? The work that MOCMI is doing with rehabilitation of Honu and turtles, it is critical work. You know, we, we, we have to act as stewards to our oceans. And from a Hawaiian perspective, that's what we did. We had different konohiki or land managers that were from the area. There were kupa aina who lived in that area, knew what type of limu, what type of turtle, what type of eel was either lacking or doing better, you know, in, that, in those conditions. And we knew how to, how to regulate our system. So this is just, it just seems like, a, I don't want to say a no-brainer, but a natural move, right, in how we manage our space. At our core, we are a reflection of our environment. What is it that you most want people who come and visit this space to take away with them. That there's more than just what you see above the water. Visit the Maui Ocean Center to explore amazing marine life and learn about the history, culture, and unique traditions of ancient Hawaii. Exciting developments are underway at the Maui Ocean Center Marine Institute. A new Honu Hospital is coming soon. Visit their website to learn more about personal actions you can take to help save turtles, adopt a Honu, volunteer, or sign up to become an intern. Learn more at voiceofthesea.org. Follow us on social media at Voice of the Sea TV. Mahalo for watching Voice of the Sea. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is the dynamic curriculum developed by the University of Hawaii's Curriculum Research and Development Group. The award-winning Fluid Earth and Living Ocean textbooks are now interactive and online. New activities, updated content, and a teacher community. Exploring Our Fluid Earth is now freely available. Find out more at exploringourfluidearth.org.